Hello Valley viewers and welcome to Retro Wings Restorations. That was as bad as it looked, wasn't it? That really was. Wow. Cheese Factor 10, engage. Hello valued viewers and welcome to Retro Wings Restorations. Now, this afternoon, it's almost evening. This evening, afternoon, evening, my wife and child have gone out to play. So I've got some time in the man cave, open bracket, workshop, close bracket. So I thought I'd give you a little tour to see what I have going on here. As you can see, it's quite cold. You can see my breath. We are in central Scotland here. It is winter. Just turned new year, as in yesterday, and it is very cold. So starting in the bottom end of the workshop uh, this is actually a three meter by three meter extension uh, that's pretty much nine feet by nine feet and imperial didn't offend anyone that time uh, this is a wooden structure extended onto my original concrete fabricated garage this is where i try to do the dirty work that goes on in here if you get what i mean so this is an insulated part, but it is still quite cold. I do run a diesel heater uh, to try and keep the temperature up a little bit. Not always successfully, as you can see. Me being wearing many layers today, many layers. So in this bottom end of the workshop, in the middle, I have a four foot by two and a half foot work table. Uh, it's quite low, so I build up the height using these rubber uh, recycled car tire mats which help build up the height and give me a nice soft surface for um, hitting things with which is nice um, on the back wall here as you can see I have a I think it's a 120 litre uh, degreasing tank which I use for cleaning parts before we do any sandblasting or, or any other kind of finishing work I have this looks like a work table but alas it is not it is actually a fairly large commercial grade fan stroke filter system which I believe would be out of a restaurant or something kindly donated by my good friend Alec I'll not say his second name because it may get him in trouble uh, but you know who you are Alec thank you very much it's only taken me four weeks to figure out how to fit this into the workshop so this filter is much higher capacity than the four inch filter and fan I had running before and it now runs 8 inch, a lot higher extraction for painting, blasting, things like that. So a much safer environment. Thank you, Alec. Uh, here we have the lovely logo, which was originally on this wall, but then I put a vapour blasting cabinet there, which kind of messed that up a little bit. Speaking of the vapour blasting cabinet, here we have a vapour blasting cabinet. This is actually a converted sandblast cabinet which I made with my father-in-law who very kindly guided me through the electronic part for electronics are not my forte but yeah so that's one I'll maybe go over in another video over on the far side where you just about see I'll pan the camera around and take this audio I do have a workbench underneath as a smaller sandblast cabinet my welding rigs and other paraphernalia so welcome back what we've done is we've flipped round 180 degrees and i'm on the other side of the cabin part of the workshop as you can see this is a continuation from the bottom end where the sandblast cabinet and storage shelf is i have my spare grinder up on the top i have my box tool sets which is mostly bearing pullers brake vacuums things like that um, ultrasonic cleaner my kit for electroplating and then some of the dangerous chemicals to keep them out of the way of my daughter who is five and very mischievous down the bottom i don't know if you can just about see that but i will take a pan shot is the 100 litre compressor moving along a little bit is all my bits and bobs up here all my greases and degreasers and oils and what have you and here is my smaller more mobile tool set not very comprehensive but this is just enough to get me through the basics up at this end of the workshop and it's a nice snap-on one and who does not like snap-on 
uh, the subwoofer for the speaker system because you have to have music and down the bottom is another tool chest you can just about see the lid of which is my all my painting kit and the shop vac which is just an old vax over on this side if I slide along on the seat is my sort of metal working area I think you can just about see most of it up the top we've got our sound system or clamps measuring things meter sticks angle measurers big vice huge vice the grinding wheel set up with a normal grinding wheel and a brush brush brass brush bra brass brush down below we have the pillar drill which is just kept stowed away safely we'll have my crankshaft christmas tree maybe we'll make a video about that and then tig wire not used for tigging um, and then a bit. That's it for this end. Was there anything else? No, that's about it. We'll go mobile now and we'll go and see the rest. So here continuing on from the extension part of the garage, the wooden part, is the original concrete garage, which is six meters by three meters in size. Uh, this being concrete is somewhat prone to leakage so I do have to run a dehumidifier 24 hours a day uh, but one of those things living in this part of the world now the left hand side here is pretty well stocked with all my spares and parts for some of the bikes I'm working on and on the wall I have just for space saving all of the bike stands that I'm not using at the moment as well as a, a small workbench which has got lots of things stacked on it over here i have some engines a honda vf500 which are yet to be worked on and lots of tools and wheels below and all my cleaning supplies and cleaning chemicals which are kept well off the ground away from children over on this side just the doors of the clothing hanging here i have the bits and bobs and filming equipment, my Makita tool collection and chargers there underneath so I've always got charged batteries ready to work as well as my actual car and motorcycle chargers up there. In this brightly coloured stack which I came across one day is all my wiring and electronic spares and soldering equipment. Up here we have relevant manuals, can you tell I work on Hondas? And my SGS tool cabinets, which I have taken a great deal of loving time to set up with shadow foam so that all my tools fit in and are nice and secure and easy to find. What I have found is over the years I have must have spent days looking for tools and not able to find them and not able to complete jobs in a reasonably timely manner and have an endless frustration and that day is over. Over here we have more spares and some tools for the bikes I'm working on. Speaking of which, this one is a Honda VF500 which I will be making into a race replica of the 1983 Honda NS500 as ridden by Ron Haslam and this is a Honda VF1000R I believe an 85 so F model which I will be breaking and taking all the suspension components from to put onto the VF replica I'm building. Some people say well why don't you restore this one this one's a little bit far gone. It's pretty corroded in a lot of the sort of crucial areas. The engine's very high mileage. It's on 88,000 miles. And even if we put all the effort and time into it, I just don't think it's going to be worth that in the end. So I'll be taking the components I need, cleaning them up, and selling the rest, just breaking it. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of the workshop I have here set up. I do very much hope that in 2023 I'm able to bring you some of the stuff I get up to in here and maybe even some of the stuff I get outside of here and hope you enjoy this venture I go on this year with the bikes in the workshop. 
Thank you very much. Have a good day.